Hi everyone, welcome back and happy Friday. So in this video we're going to talk about five things you should never say to someone you know who suffers from mental health issues. In addition to that, we're also going to talk about things you can say to substitute things you want to tell them. So it doesn't come off as aggressive or as hurtful, you know, as mean, you know, stuff that doesn't contribute to the stigma, right, of using such language like that. Especially just with someone who's, let's say, depressed, you know, you tell them you're crazy or, you know, you're insane or, you know, stuff like that. So before we get started, again, I thank you guys for tuning in. And without any further ado, let's get started. Number one, stop acting crazy. Now, this phrase as a whole can be just, you know, something that just falls off your tongue. You know, you don't think before you say it. It just comes off, right? But even in that, the few minutes that it comes off your tongue and it, you know, hits the person in the face that you're talking to, it can make them feel worthless about themselves, make them feel, you know, bad, make them feel down. Or, you know, especially if, you know, if they have depression or they have some other issues too more than depression or they just naturally you know they're just a person of low self-esteem that won't help them either but some things you can say to substitute you're crazy would be to be more specific about what they're doing and how like they're doing it so for example you know be specific about a positive experience like they clean their house good or you know, they tried something new, but if you're going to go for, you want to come off as questioning their behavior, you can go be like, you know, your dog's always messy, maybe you should try and clean, clean up after them more so the place doesn't, you know, look like a mess or, you know, smell, etc. Basically, to sum it up, just think before you, you act, right? Don't come off aggressive, especially if you know that they suffer from mental health issues. Don't come off like you're heartless, mean. You know, be compassionate. You know, talk to them like you'd want to be talked to, right? You don't want someone coming up to you and say, you know, you're one crazy, you know, right? It might tick you off. And imagine if someone who's already depressed or they're an introvert, you know, you tell that to them, it just might make them go from. Maybe if they're ready at 70, they'll drop down to 10, right? And they'll stay like that. And it'll take a while for them to rebuild that self-esteem that they worked so hard to, you know, build up to the point where they can actually go out and do things with friends, maybe slowly but surely progress, right? Now, the next one I can relate to quite a lot because this one sentence really and truly annoys me from the inside out. Number two, just don't worry about it. Calm down. You know, everything will be okay, you know, don't think about it. It's whatever, it's life. Yeah, don't tell them that. It doesn't work. It'll make them even worry more. It'll make them more anxious. Maybe onset some panic attacks. Now when I'm speaking from experience. That one sentence alone, just don't worry about it, it it can just kill my mood. And sometimes, you know, it takes a while for my mood to come right back up to par. Especially, depending on the situation too, what I'm talking about. If it's like a, you know, family issue, like if I'm telling someone about my, you know, my daughter, I haven't been able to see in two months, you know, things like that. And then you're telling me, oh, don't worry about it, you know, you'll see her eventually. Or, you know, the kicker with that one. I have friends who tell me, oh, just, you know, move on with life. You can have more kids. I'm like, really? That doesn't help the situation at all, does it? Anyway, this is something you wouldn't say to someone you know who suffers from anxiety and depression. And the other thing is, pretty much, a lot of people have anxiety, even if they're not, even if they're not diagnosed. They can show signs of, you know, being anxious, being on edge. Like, it's a small thing. So I will do a video about on about, like, signs of anxiety. I don't know how thorough it's going to be just yet. I'm still working on it. But, um, anyway. 
So let's see what else we can do with this. Right, sorry, I had a brain fart. So what you can do, you can tell them, you know, calm down. Everyone knows you need to calm down. You know, you need to find a safe place. You know, your grounding techniques when you're having an anxiety attack. Breathe. Try and find a safe place. Make sure if you're feeling overwhelmed, learn the anxiety grounding tips. And what the hell, I may as well just mention them now since I have them in my hand. Look around you. Find five things you can see. Four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. This is called grounding, and this is what you do during during an anxiety attack. And this is very important. If you know anyone who suffers from anxiety, write this down, Google it. There's pictures probably on Google Images with this. Share it, because these are the kind of things, like these five things, can save someone's life who was going through an anxiety attack. Always keep that in your phone, screenshot it, write down, because you never know when this will come in handy. Now, some things you can say besides telling someone, you know, calm down, is not to be seen as judgmental, right? Be supportive, you know. Be like, yeah, I know, you know, life is hard right now, but, you know, if you need anyone to talk to, I'm here, or, you know, if you need a hug, or... Just be supportive, right? Don't be judgmental. Don't be, you know, a whole. Don't be aggressive. Don't be... Don't put them down, right? They're human. Like, everyone's a human being. We all deserve love and support. But, you know, overall, be thoughtful. Be considerate. Because you never know. Anxiety is not something to play with. And even if you, you don't mean, like, mean bad... Even if you're joking, it can come off as hostile to someone, especially that they suffer from really severe anxiety like me. So, you know, just be thoughtful what you say, you know, and be supportive. Okay, guys, we're halfway through. This one is going to be another big one, and especially for those who suffer from, I guess, how do I phrase this in a different way? Self-harming and going that next step if you know what I mean so number three is uh, okay I'll, I'll just say it I was trying to simplify it but number three this makes me want to kill myself don't say that right or you know other things to oh I wish I were dead or this makes me want to commit suicide jokingly ha 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 no that's not funny right and I know actually a lot of people say this one in particular that's why I chose to just go out of it I wasn't going to censor it because you know this is a big one on its own suicide is not a something to joke about and in this city for example living in Toronto only a select few people that I've talked to know what I'm about to say so we have a pretty decent transit system here and I for one I've seen people commit suicide by jumping in front of trains. You know that old that um, saying, if you watch, uh, watch TV every now and then, you see a commercial, it's hard to stop a train. It is. Me, personally, I've seen a lot of people jump in front of trains. Like, it got to the point where I even saw, I think it was two years ago, a pregnant woman do it. Right, and it's it's messed up, especially when you're someone who suffers from mental health, mental health issues, and you see people just committing suicide. Like you actually see it with your eyes, you know, not like, oh yeah, I saw a video on YouTube or saw it in a newspaper. Or I I heard like you know, I've seen it, and not only once, I've seen this go on probably ten times. And the sad part is, they cover it up. They don't tell the public you just say oh someone fell on the tracks they got injured that's it bobbed your uncle no that's something i i kind of want to work on too awareness with that but that's kind of going off topic a little bit so let's continue in america it's the 10th leading cause of death 
In Canada, I'm not really sure. Okay, I checked. It ranks ninth in Canada. With that being said, someone who has, you know, suicidal tendencies doesn't need to hear someone who has experienced, you know, who hasn't really experienced it or, like, I guess, you know, events that could make them, I guess, feel the need to do it. Like, you know, something happens at work or, you know, they got dumped or something, you know. That is different than, you know, someone who suffers from it, whose mental health is out of whack, you know, that's just attacking them on the inside. You know, they, they don't need to hear someone randomly just say, oh, I got dumped, and that makes me want to kill myself. No, that that's going to make them feel worse about their situation. So, ba basically, again, back to the other two. Think before you talk about stuff like this. Like, think before you speak, right? It's not necessarily... I'm trying to phrase it in a way where it makes sense, but I guess that's the only way I can really state it because, you know, suicide prevention, su suicide awareness, it's still like a growing thing. So, but with that being said... Let's see what we can say to lessen the impact of our words and on that subject matter. Basically, the substitution for that would be... Like, don't, don't feel like you have to, you know, have a little bag of cotton candy, you know, to make, make, make them feel better about your words, like how you're speaking, you know, walking on eggshells. What, what you should do with that sense is be specific... Like, think about your sentences before you say them. Like, uh, sorry. I'm thinking here how, how to really phrase it properly. So, it can help a severely depressed person to get out of his or her head. If you tr try and phrase things more difficult, right? Well, not really more difficult. Try and relate to what they're saying. So, you know, you can say something along like, oh, you know, I don't think I'm going to pass this test tomorrow. It's getting me down, but I'll get over it, right? But really, I, I don't know. Like, I've worked so hard, and I feel like if I don't pass, I'm going to, and you know, how the rest of the sentence is going to end. So just try and, I guess, sugarcoat it, but don't make them feel like you're treating them like a child. But at the same time, don't be, like, don't retaliate. Don't be, like, straight to the point. Just, like, again, back to the other one, show compassion. Because, again, you never know how powerful words are to people, especially when you suffer from mental health. Like, again, with me, back to that friend I was talking about, the man doesn't have a filter. So, things like this... He wouldn't care if I say stuff like this to him. Yeah, he he would still, like, you know, say this, 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 or I'm going to have a breakdown, or I'm going to off myself, or blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really, man? You know what I deal with, and you just say things like this? He's like, yeah, so, like, really? I just, that's why I don't really talk to him as much. But again, friends, right? He's not really a friend. He's more of a toxic friend, but I won't get back into that for the rest of this video. We have two more left to go, folks. Number four. Hmm. Therapy is for people who are weak. Yeah, this one I hear a lot, too. And in relation to this, you get people say, oh, therapy is for babies, or, you know, it's life, you know, grow up, and blah, blah, blah. You know, what's the point of therapy? It's a waste of money. It doesn't help. You know, why, why, why can't you just, like, grow up and, you know, accept that this is life. You're an adult now. Stop acting like a baby. You're not a kid anymore. Etc. Etc. Right? Remember something. Therapy isn't only for people who suffer from mental health issues. Therapy can be used for different things, like child psychology if you're going through... A divorce in family court 
if you experience a traumatic event, like, you know, if you, like, if you've been abused or, you know, pretty much therapy isn't only for, like, mental health issues. Therapy is just sometimes life is tough and you just need to talk to somebody. You don't have to suffer, be suffering from mental health issues to go to therapy. But, you know, just the stigma, right? Oh, he's depressed. He, he just needs to go to therapy, you know. And relating to that, actually, I tried to make some friends through a Facebook group in my city. And a lot of them knew. Like in my intro, I put like, you know, I go to therapy. I do craft stuff. I do podcasts and all that fun stuff. And every other commenter, like every time I make a post, someone would comment, dude, you need to go to therapy. No one wants to be your friend. I'm like, really? That That's not what you say to someone who suffers, right? And they know, too, a lot of people in that group suffer, too. And then you always have that one judgmental. Yeah. Anyway, so substituting what you can say besides saying, uh, you know, therapy's for the week and, you know, go to therapy or waste of time and grow up, etc., etc., just be supportive in that sense if you know they need to go to therapy but you're against therapy or you think it's a joke bite your tongue just be like i know you're dealing with a lot and if you think therapy can help you go do it and i'll be here to support you if you need anything else you know simple as that you don't have to say anything else you don't have to give them a long essay and tell them this and that because if you like you know try and I guess, how do I phrase this? If you try and overwork it, they'll just think you're being fake and you're just trying to make them feel better about the situation that they're in. And then that causes a whole bucket of other problems. So now we're on to the last one. And this one here, I, this is something I've thought about too, but that's me talking to myself, you know, I'm, I'm not crazy, but you know, Sometimes you think, you know, if you wake up, maybe it'll be different in the morning. That's what number five is. Things will be better in the morning. Or, you know, tomorrow's another day, or cheer up. Now, this I know can be said from the heart. Like, you know, it's not intentional to make you feel bad or, you know, depressed, make you anxious. But... If you're going to say stuff like that, cheer up, buttercup, you know, tomorrow's going to be a, a better day, or, you know, tomorrow's another day, just sleep and you'll forget everything tomorrow. For someone who suffers from major depressive, anxiety, panic, that won't work for them because every day is a battle in itself for them. So when you're, especially if they know, like, if you know this person suffers that much and they're on medication and things aren't working out well for them, don't say that because really it feels like a slap in the face. And it makes them feel like you have no desire to really understand what mental health is and what they're dealing with. So a couple things you can really say. Now, this one, I don't really have to read my chart here for this, but... Substit substituting it, you can be like, you know, you know, life life can be tough. If you need someone to talk to, I'm here. You know, you don't have to deal with this alone, day or night. You can call me. I'll come to your house. You know, hugs go a long way too. Depending on the person, you know, a hug might help out in the long run. You never know, but. Again, it can be difficult to speak to someone who's dealing with mental illness, especially if you don't know, if you've never experienced it yourself. It could be like a needle in a haystack, right? But really, with this, it's all about the stigma against mental health and feelings and how to deal with it. If you just try and be supportive, right? Be supportive, think before you, think before you act, you know? don't I'm trying to don't sugarcoat their feelings like you know if they're depressed and they need someone to talk to you just want to be left alone 
maybe leave him alone for a little bit, right? If they just want some time to themselves, check up on him, though. Don't forget about him. Don't say, oh, okay, you know, you need some time to yourself. I'll call you in an hour or something, and you don't call him until the next day, right? That can be worse. Or send him a text message. Keep track of them. Not like they're a baby, but, like, make sure they're okay. Every now and then, a text message, it, it goes a long way, so at least they know someone cares, right? So that's the five things you should never say to someone who suffers from mental illness with a couple tips, you know, a couple like no related stories. I threw in the anxiety grounding tips. And if you want, I'll even leave a link in the description for a couple of things you can read up on how to deal with people who suffer from mental health issues. And without any further ado, I guess that's the end of our video for now. And if you're on Instagram, there's an account you, you should check out. It's called M underscore chats for mental underscore health. She does a lot of nice mental health posts and memes, and you can relate to them a lot. I'll leave a description to her Instagram page below and give her some support. She's actually, I can relate to a lot of stuff she posts, and I've talked to her a few times. So I promise I give her a little shout out because I do like her content. And thank you guys for tuning into this video. I look forward to hearing your thoughts, your comments, your support on this subject, and I'll see you in the next one.